Okay, now well, today I'm going to tie up a fun little pattern. It's uh, something of a, of a cross between a uh, Bob Popovic's uh, surf candy fly and a fly that my uh, buddy Larry kind of designed that he calls the popsicle stick. Uh, Larry's been fishing the popsicle stick for Sea Run Cutthroat for quite a few years now and uh, <clears throat> I eventually started tying them and fishing them myself and they're extremely productive. Uh, my only issue with them is the uh, durability. They're tied with uh, synthetics and some calf hair and a few things but they're all tied uh, one wing stacked on top of each other just sort of at the front of the hook and uh, just a thread body and I find that after a few fish they tend to get shredded easily. So once I learned about uh, these surf candy style flies it just seemed like a natural solution to tie them up this way. So that's what I've got here. Um, Real basic fly, just uses uh, three colors of Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe, which uh, if you haven't used this stuff, it's pretty neat. It's the same material that uh, the Ice Dubbing that you probably are familiar with, only it's uh, long and straight and comes on these cards so you can cut off a chunk, use for wings and tails and flash. And um, I've used it for all kinds of stuff in my saltwater flies. <clears throat> uh, hopefully you can kind of see this. It's about three to a half, four inches long comes on cards, um, comes in a whole array of colors, but uh, the the ends, what I really like, the ends are, are tapered. They're not squared off like a lot of synthetics, which is uh, always a complaint of mine. Uh, it's a fun fly to tie, very productive, um, so let's give it a whirl here. Uh, to start off, I got a, uh, this, stuff, this stuff is really messy, I'm just going to warn you right now. It's You're going to make it all over your floor, all over yourself. Uh, it's great material, but Man, does it make a mess. So to start, I've got a Upqua U401 size 8. Same hooks I've been tying on a lot lately. Just trying to go through this big stash that I have. Um, and I have some uh, 6 aught light pink uni thread. I tend to use 6 aught for just about all of my C-Run cutthroat flies. So I'm just going to lay down a little thread base here. And bring it back forward to the front right behind the eye. To start off with, I'm going with some pearl uh, shimmer fringe. So I'm just going to cut a chunk of this off the card, make a giant mess, of course. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just, just like with bucktail or you know anything else really, I'm just going to thin it out to kind of get the, the size and shape that I want. I want, <clears throat> I want these to be real sparse, like all my cutthroat flies. Uh, I think that's one of the easiest mistakes fly tires can make, is to, to use too much materials. Uh, I've been tying for, I don't know, close to 20 years now, and uh, I still haven't <laughs> totally learned that lesson. Uh, so, nice little sparse amount. I want it to be, no, there's no perfect answer about length of two hook shanks, you total, so, you know, somewhere in there. And I'm going to tie it in right on top, right behind the eyes, the eye of the hook. And then I'm just going to wrap my thread back, securing it back towards the bend of the hook. Bring the thread back up. And now I'm going to go with some, uh, this is shell pink. Shimmer Fringe. Uh, it's, to me it seems more of a hot pink, but <clears throat> that's what they call it, so whatever. Same thing, just cut off a chunk and thin it down. I tend to waste a lot of material when I do it this way, but I can't ever seem to just cut off the right size that I need, so this stuff is fairly inexpensive. And you get quite a few flies out of it anyway. Okay. Now I like to try to make each layer just slightly longer than the one under it. Um, not very much, just just slightly. I think it kind of gives the whole fly a little bit of a tapered look to it, which I like. So again, I tie this down right on top, right behind the eye of the hook. Secure it back towards the bend. forward. You can 
see a theme here. <laughs> and then to finish off, I'm going to go with some chartreuse. Shimmer fringe. This com color combination of, of pink and chartreuse is just phenomenal in Puget Sound and the Straits of Juan de Fuca and even off the coast. Uh, I, I don't entirely know why, but it's just absolutely the greatest color combination for coho salmon. I've caught Chinook salmon with it. I see run cutthroat. Uh, rockfish, you, you just, uh, every fish that swims around here will eat this color combo. And I don't know why, there's not a lot of chartreuse and pink stuff swimming around in these waters that I'm familiar with, but I'm not going to argue with the results. So. so the chartreuse right on top. Same story. A lot of times when I tie these, especially the bigger versions for rockfish, I'll use a clear mono thread and that just allows the the color of the body to shine through the resin after we apply it, but even with this pink thread it's not gonna it's still gonna shine through quite a bit. <clears throat> so put on a whip finish and I don't need to glue it because I'm gonna be adding some uh, resin stuff here. Next I'm going to put on my eyeballs and these eyes are not what I'd usually use. I, I've been tying a bunch of these today and uh, I ran out of the, the normal eyes. So these are uh, ones that I stole from a package of uh, fish skull heads that come with the package to glue onto the, to the head. And they're kind of a dark brownish color, I don't know. I usually use red or yellow, but this is better than nothing. Again, there's just, it's half the fun of fly tie, and there's just no right answer. However you want to do it. So, stick those on, and I'm going to use uh, Clear Cure Goo Thin, and I'm going to start with just a just a little bit. My main concern is to just get these these eyeballs locked in first. Uh, once they're they're kind of secured in place, then I can mess around and get the body the rest of the way I want it without having to worry about eyeballs moving on me. So I just kind of use a toothpick to sort of work it around a little bit. That's my son's cat, actually. Okay. So I got those sort of kind of set where I want. I'm shooting with my light here. Finally, my wife just brought me some fresh batteries for this thing. I've been struggling all day. It's still, this, this clear cure goo light that came with the kit is... It's not that great. In fact, uh, as soon as I run out of this clear cure goo that I currently have, I'm going to start seeing what else is out on the market. If anybody has a recommendation for a good UV cure and light uh, that cures tack free and a powerful light, I would love to hear it. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to add some more goo and you don't need tons and tons I probably got too much on there with the rotary vise you can just kinda spin around and Clear cure thin is it's fairly viscous, but it'll flow sort of whichever way you want it if you just use your rotary. You can see I also use a toothpick just to help kind of 
Got a little too much on there anyway. So you just gotta kinda play with it to get the shape. I want the general bait fish profile with a little bit bigger head and then slimming back. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Depending on the the head shape that you give it, it actually will affect the the action as the fly is under retrieve. It'll dart left, dart right, dart up, dart down. Just kind of neat. And it just takes a little bit of time to kind of get that shape. I'm getting pretty close here, I think. I'm going to shoot this and then add maybe just a little bit more. I find it's easier to do it in stages, two or three stages, versus trying to get it all in one shot. First you want to be careful that you don't fill up the eye of your hook. I've certainly done that more than once. It's looking pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot that again. This uh, clear cure goo thin, any of the clear cure goo originals things, they don't cure tack free, which is kind of a hassle. So what I've been doing is using uh, Clear Cure Hydro over the top of it. The Hydro is <clears throat> real thin and uh, it's good to work with, but it's not good really for building up bodies like this. But it cures tack free. So I'll just take a little, little bit and coat over the top of this. And then the last step is going to be to take some more of this hydro and I'm going to kind of soak it into the fibers, the shimmer fringe, right where it comes off the hook. Maybe the first quarter inch or so. Let it soak in there a little bit. And this is just to help prevent fouling. <clears throat> this is going to stiffen up the material right where it comes off the hook. So then when you're retrieving the fly, the limp material is not going to get wrapped around the, the bend of the hook and foul up and look all goofy. If you've ever fished a fly that you have to readjust every three casts because it fouls, it's kind of a pain. You can see how that firms up. So there you have it. Just a real simple uh, surf candy style fly tied in the... Uh, popsicle stick colors. 
Uh, super effective searching pattern, uh, just working down the beach, trying to cover water. Uh, I fish it year round. I generally fish it on an intermediate line as I fish an intermediate 98% of the time. But uh, So give it a shot, add a few to your box. If they work for you, love to hear about it. As always, thanks for watching.